Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Flick Geeks. I'm your host Johnny D. Flick Geeks presents. Forgot about that. Flip Geeks and Gas presents. <laughs> I'm your host Johnny D, and as always from the Hidden Ink on the Mall podcast, Carlos Barajas. Nothing? Not a high? I present to you Jesus. <laughs> Alright, so basically we have two different opinions on this movie that we're going to be talking about. It is a... Uh, it was a film that came out in 1979, but Draft House Films decided to uh, restore it, remaster it, and present it to it uncut theatrically in limited release this uh, this week in New York and L.A. Yes. It is entitled The Visitor. It's a, we bring to you Coast Encounters of the Third Kind. I mean, The Omen. I mean, The Visitor. And also Rosemary's Baby? I mean, Rosemary's Baby. I mean, The Visitor. Don't forget The Fury. And The Fury. <laughs> you can't really see where we're going here. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, so basically this is a an Italian exploitation movie. Sci-fi horror hybrid, as a lot of people are saying. Right. Because, I mean, they take... Basically, what somebody said was... They take the best parts in, these, in like, The Omen, Close Encounters, in these awesome 70s horror sci-fi movies, and they roll it up into The Visitor. And, uh... Whatever you're watching back here, if you're looking at what, what, what's in back of this uh, monitor, there's a lot of weird shit that goes on in this fucking movie. Well, basically, the premise is an intergalactic warrior battles alongside a cosmetic Christ figure against a demonic eight-year-old girl and her pet hawk. As the fate of the universe hangs in the balance... And is that Frank Nero? That is, that is Frank Nero. That's the, Django. That's the original Django. Not the Unchained one. Not Yeah. But, uh, so basically, yeah, this is, so, <laughs> the Draft House Films website is claiming it the sci-fi horror epic that 1979 could not handle. And you know what? They're exactly right. And uh, I think 2013 still can't handle this. You really don't think so? Uh, not because it's controversial, but because it's, uh, it's a little lackluster. <laughs> lackluster, okay. I mean, a lot of people think that, I mean, I really, look, um, the, I don't know how to put this, but um, I think you really need some substances to watch this film, mm. which I can't condone, but I'm saying, like, if you have any, use it and watch this movie, <laughs> because you might need it, because it's a very bizarre, fucked, fucking crazy movie. Really crazy. And I, yeah. There's nothing really... <laughs> like, uh, does that explain everything? Uh, well, almost one, one thing. Um, this whole movie, with at the end of the day, it's like, oh, this little girl, and she may bring upon the end of the world, and she has like powers and mm. stuff like that. Right. Um, intergalactic aliens playing heaven and earth, like religious angle with aliens. Now, uh, um, well, one, one thing that this movie ultimately. I didn't like the movie. You know. I'm not going to beat around the bush. I didn't like this movie. Not because <laughs> it offended me on a religious level or anything like that. No. I don't think it will it, offend anybody. No. On a, it, I it, highly it, fucking doubt that. I just find it to be a little dull and derivative. Uh, if anything, it actually made me appreciate another film that has a somewhat similar plot but more streamlined. What? And it's, it's, it's not even a, a film held in high regard. But it made me appreciate... The Omen for The Awakening. You mean the direct to D? You mean the the made for TV movie? Yes. Have you ever seen The Omen for The Awakening? My, uh, actually, Arlene Martinez actually has uh, has the whole box. She set. has it includes all all four of them. It does. Yeah. Uh, Omen for The Awakening involves not Damien because Damien was killed in the third one. Sam, Sam Neill. Neil. Yes. Jeez. Sam Neill didn't return back from Jurassic Park in that one, but uh. Sam Neill Merlin over there died in part three, so Damien was dead, but um, mm -hmm. the Omen 4 deals with a girl, a little girl, Damien's daughter. Damien's daughter? Yeah. Damien had a daughter, and that's... Oh. And so the whole thing is about this little girl who has these powers and, you know, yeah. may bring about the apocalypse, and, you know, and it's like, <laughs> yeah, you know, while watching this, I'm like, you know, I, while, while watching this, I was like, you know... Omen 4 is looking really good right about now. <laughs> yeah. um, it, 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 
maybe because it's almost a similar plot, but without none of this, like, added sci-fi weirdness that this thing tried I mean, to present. I mean, it's, it's actually a really interesting cast for in this in The Visitor. You have... Uh, you, you have Lance Henderson. You have an American film director... Um, <laughs> sorry, what? Bro, fuck, I forgot his name. John... It, it's it's right here. John Huston, the man who directed The Maltese Falcon, Tresor Madre, and is also Angelica Houston's father. Uh-huh. A lot of Humphrey Bogart films in that. Yeah. Um, also who, also in the film, uh, Glenn Ford, Shelley Winters, uh, Franco Nero. Yeah, Franco Nero. As we said before, Sam Peckinpah, the director of The Wild Bunch, is in it. In a very interesting scene. I don't know if I should really spoil it or not. I mean, it's not really spoiling it, but you can tell he's dubbed. And you can tell the the actress in that scene redubbed her lines. And they both seem very out of sync. And I enjoyed that just because it's it was there. Mm. But, um... And Lance. Let's not forget Lance. Yes. Lance Henriksen. I always, I always kind of screw up his last name, but Henriksen, 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 yeah, Aliens, last Bishop, Bishop from Aliens, Millennium Man, and he, de- and of, and Hard Target, Hard Target. That's it's on so many damn movies you can find. Only you will bring up Hard Target. How Razor Infer- Inferno? Was it Inferno? I don't fucking know. Anyway, the point is that. The guy has done a lot of uh, done a lot of horror movies, but uh, anyways, Pumpkinhead. Oh, and Pumpkinhead, of course. But uh, I mean, this movie is just so fucking crazy, and it's just it's it's just it's better to see the film with an audience. I I, I would tell you that right now. I mean, I had a good time with it. I I, uh, I enjoyed the film a lot. I don't think it was the best movie of all t- the best cult movie of all time, but. It was certainly enjoy. I thought it was certainly enjoyable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe if you have your expectations low and you want to see a bunch of uh, Italian sci-fi <laughs> horror slog. It's funny. Out of all the draft house films that uh, that the fine pe- that those fine people send me uh, send us to uh, to watch to review. Actually, I was excited with the visitor this whole year when they announced it, and when I read the synopsis, and I was like. Shit, this looks pretty fun, actually. So this is the this is the the, the antis- my anticipated movie that I wanted to see from Draft Draft House Films this year. So I was again, thank you Draft House Films for uh, for letting us review it. And yeah, I was actually yeah, uh, I I just kept my expectations just the way that they were. I wasn't expecting high, low, or anything. I just I just enjoyed it for what it was. And uh, by the way, you hear this music? Yeah, you like that? I uh, you know what? I will give you that. The the music in this mm-hmm. was really good. Like every time when classic they classic sh- 70s yeah. music. Like especially every Done time Done by an Italian composer. Every time when they show the little bald kid army, you know, it's like <laughs> it's like da 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 like I love this music. Well, the reason why I'm saying this, since you're listening to it right now, <laughs> Um, I don't know why we're pointing up, but that's okay. Music this, from heaven. Yes, the music that you're hearing right now is uh, is actually uh, part of a three song soundtrack sampler. Go to DrafthouseFilms.com and then you know click on the visitor page. You can actually download three tracks from uh, from the sound from the uh, from the soundtrack, and it's well worth it. I've actually played the the three sample track for the past couple of weeks now i'm not gonna lie i think that's the best thing in the movie is the soundtrack <laughs> but you know what i mean those italians man they can they can make some movie the, some movie soundtracks come they, on without they, they coined spaghetti western music without a doubt the italian the italian film composers can definitely make a one hell of a score mm. i really really like those i really like the score i think you'll like the score but um what else what else is there to talk about in the about this movie uh, God, I still can't get over like Franco Nero's weird Jesus kind of like. <laughs> I was like, "Sir, you're you're a stable spaghetti western, and you look like a dirty hippie." <laughs> I, don't, it, 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 it ultimately it first sounds like something trying to sell me on Scientology because there's like it kind of actually um I I was uh what's it called. Yeah, I kind of I was watching it. and It kind of looked like it was a cult. Yes, 
it, it's like him and his little bald children army. It's like, did, let me tell you the story of, was it, Saratine? <laughs> and it was like, it's this girl who had powers, who can rule the world. And it's like, this woman who can give birth to the other child. And they won't mate. And I was like, <laughs> then they're going to tell me about the aliens who dropped the nukes and uh, and nuke the dinosaurs. And then John Travolta made a movie out of and it. And then John Travolta's going to make a movie. But, uh, I mean, again, I enjoyed it for what it was. I didn't take it, I mean, I didn't take it that seriously. I mean, there's a lot of really fucking ridiculous things in this movie. But, I mean, it was just all in good fun. And again, like I said, it's just best to see with an audience because you'll get the full, you know, crazy audience experience. I mean, again, you're, you're see look, watch, watch the ice skating sequence. That, that's just, what the fuck? Oh, and also, what's another what the fuck moment? The basketball, like when the basketball exploded. <laughs> the basketball. And, and I'm surprised no one, no one like really reacted to that. It's like, well, what does that happen? I don't watch much basketball game. Does that happen at the Miami Heat games all the time? LeBron it... goes up for the. He's on fire! <laughs> Boom! Who knows? Who fucking knows? It's the but... Miami Heat game. <laughs> But you got the, mad vertical hops, man. I mean, the the thing that was surprised me was uh, there's this one shot. I'm not gonna say where it's beginning, middle, and end, whatever. But there's a there's a scene where I guess there's a bunch of birds just flying all mm. over the place. But then you see this one bird that just looks like a a statue bird, or was it a, supposed to be a real live crow? I don't know. But it pops out like a switchblade or something and stabs somebody in the neck. Remember that? Clearly, they're trying to incorporate elements of the birds along with this. Well, I, I don't remember. Well, the, I'm not saying like I, I was gonna say I don't remember the, the birds. There was a bird that shot out of the a switchblade switch bird, but I'm just saying birds attacking. <laughs> you know, because mm. this this thing is channeling a lot of like. Oh yeah, without a doubt. I mean, a lot of cherry picking, a lot of influences are everywhere, and it's like, of course, the birds. I mean, the one, but. supposedly the the producer who did this is known for doing a lot of like. Ripoffs, mockbusters, mockbusters. <laughs> he was like the Italian producer, <laughs> like our buddies over at Asylum. Asylum. <laughs> but he, uh, but he was like the he was like the Asylum for Italian movies. Mm -hmm. So he ripped off Jaws and like a bunch of other films in the seventies. But then this was his quintessential, like his mega, his mega mockbuster mm -hmm. that just incorporated. Everything from the 70s, like horror sci fi films, and just rolled it into one movie called The Visitor. But, um. But ultimately, this is no Bruno Matai film. No, it's not. No. <laughs> I only look at. I only watch. If I'm gonna watch Italian horror bottom of the barrel, I watch my Bruno Matai. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Have a cigarette while I smoke. I'm a snob. <laughs> I. I. We. I, I, I'm a snob. <laughs> yeah. But um, but I think that's all we can really say about the film. I mean, I mean, it's twelve minutes long already. The review, so but let's wind it let's down. Let's wind it down. Uh, okay, so as for me, I dug the film. I will probably give it a four out of five. But that's again, you have to go see it with an audience and all that. But uh, if you want to go see it, they're actually um, it's opening up in New York and L.A. this week, and also a bunch of other places that I can't really remember right now. But if you want. Go to, again, DraftHouseFilms.com, uh, click on the visitor uh, page, and uh, then you can see uh, where it's playing in a city near you. Mm -hmm. And also, again, the three-song uh, the three song soundtrack sampler, definitely a big recommendation. Go get that free, <laughs> go get that free sample, sample. But, um, Coles, and you said you hate the fuck out of it, right? I'll give it, a, if anything, a two out of five. A two out of five. A two out of five. Wow, I'm still shocked. <laughs> but that is it for this week's uh, Flick Geeks Presents. Uh, follow us on uh, Instagram, Twitter at Flick Geeks, Flick Geeks, uh, sorry, Facebook.com slash Flick Geeks. And uh, I don't know if I can, I guess, announce it, but uh, most likely I'm going to, we're really bad at, uh, at dates and schedules, but uh, hope, hope and pray, knock on wood, where's the wood? Thank In you. your pants. Good what? one. Uh, FlickGeeks.com. Hopefully. Announce, uh, hopefully, uh, FlickGeeks.com next week. Soonish. Very soonish. Actually, we're working on it right now. But uh, right now, like I said, until then, Johnny D. Carlos Braz. 
See you later.